In maybe one of the oddest scheduling situations that many of us have seen, we will play a doubleheader in two locations this evening. Game one here at Grider Stadium. Game number two will be away down south in Winchester. Coaches are exchanging the lineups with the umpires, and we are getting ready for baseball here in Tullahoma. Batting four, playing first, number 24. We are awaiting the national anthem. We will begin lineups for our visitors from Franklin County first. Leading off and batting 13, number 13 for Franklin County will be Dylan Grimes playing shortstop. Batting second, number 11, Eric Jones playing right field. Third baseman, number 27, Third base Morris. will be Gavin Hill, number 25. The, plate, the DH will be McKinnon Whiteset, number 18, Joseph and the designated Dixon. hitter. Wyatt Lowe will be playing second, number two. Cameron Weaver playing first, number 15. Austin Roberts will be playing third base, number three. Anthony Send will be playing center field, number one. And Jacob Hardison will be in center field, number 12, for the Rebels. Tonight, uh, Coach Morris will send uh, Brody Milton to the rubber to start uh, for the Cats. Brody with a 1-0 record on the season. This will be his third start of the year. He brings with him a beautiful earn earned run average of .656 on the season. Obviously hoping to continue that uh, good number during tonight's game. And for the Tullahoma Wildcats, starting off, we have Jackson Sheffield. Then we have uh, Jacob Dixon batting second, DJ Dillahay batting third, uh, William Zebick batting fourth. Uh, was it James Sells batting fifth? Brody Melton batting sixth. Uh, J. Ron. J. Ron Morris batting fifth. No, sixth. One, two, three, four, five. Seventh, excuse me. And then we have Caden Tucker batting eighth. And then Joe Duncan batting ninth. And that was the melodic sounds of Mr. Chris Barstad, who is uh, on the mic, producer, cameraman extraordinaire for Light Tube. Thank you for that, uh, Chris. With this uh, with this altered schedule, we weren't able to have with us tonight um, Scott Shastine and Ken Keller, so they will be missed. But you will have Jason Ray and myself, and Jason will also be here for softball this season. Thank you, Chris. Looks like the meeting at the uh, home plate is, has ended. Uh, coaches make their way back to the dugout. Wind about 15 miles an hour this afternoon. It's a beautiful day for baseball, Jason. Chris, as you look out over the campus, uh, THS tennis teams are playing at the, the same time. Uh, track is practicing, and later this evening, soccer is playing over at the soccer complex. So a busy night for those in administration that get to run that. And get softball to run that. tonight as well. Uh, middle, middle school, school softball. softball. That's correct. So busy for sports all through Tullahoma tonight. That is correct. And I think we're getting ready to take a break here in a moment. Not quite for the na ready for the national anthem, but it'll be coming up. The teams are starting to line up for it. But uh, could you ask Never for better ask new favorite shows again? For an additional $12 a month, along with your digital television service, like to... Cloud DVR lets you record up to eight programs at the same time. Receive 500 gigabytes of cloud storage and whole home DVR.
call TUA Customer Service to add light to Cloud DVR to your digital television service today at 455 4515. We're back here on the Light Tube Sports Network on this beautiful afternoon for baseball. We have our hometown Tullahoma Wildcats and our visitors from the south, the Franklin County Rebels, in the first matchup of two games for the evening. First matchup here at Grider Stadium and the nightcap at 7 o'clock at Franklin County in a home and away doubleheader for today. Waiting for the Cats to take the field and warm up and get this game going. Brody Melton will take the hill for the Cats. Had a nice early season as we move into uh, the middle section in the District 8 part of the season, Chris. Uh, no question of that. They did a, had a, he did a great job last week in Coffee County on Tuesday night. I mean, he just had a good game. They dominated that game as well as, again, on Wednesday night, they dominated that game as well. Uh, former Wildcat. Uh, Mr. Dixon here throwing out the ceremonial first pitch. Nice to see him back uh, on the field. It is. It's always nice to see these guys come back home. And, I mean, even the coach of the Tullahoma Wildcats this year is a, another Wildcat that returned home after right, a trip up to the, the show. Another alum. Wildcats That's right. That's great. Uh, going Jackson back on uh, Brody Melton. We mentioned earlier a tremendous earn run average Second as he base, enters this game. And we Dixon. enter the uh, District 8 Triple A meet of the schedule. The Cats will step Back away from district action baseman, this weekend with a uh, right Warrior field, Classic James in Murfreesboro. I believe they have four games James over the three games. And then they'll Dixon. step back Brody into Melton. district play over next Tuesday Dixon. and Wednesday against James Lawrence Ron County. Morris. And I think. Two, it's going to be a good thing Tucker, for the Wildcats this year because field, a lot of teams Joseph aren't Dixon. used to seeing this aggressive play that uh, Brian Morris has brought to the Wildcat baseball team. A good aggressive play. Uh, aggressive can mean many things, but aggressive at the plate is always a good thing in uh, baseball and softball. Uh, Brody Milton begins his warm-up pitches. Uh, cats are throwing the ball around the field, and uh, it's great to be here. Uh, this evening. Cats uh, stand at 5-2 and two on the season, leading uh, eight AAA play with a 2-0 and o record. Hope to continue that zero on the right side of uh, that number uh, after today's two games. And that, that is the goal. And, you know, hopefully luck will be on the side of the Wildcats tonight. Um, but I haven't I've thoroughly enjoyed watching the Cats play this year. No, you know, we've only broadcast one game, but I've seen a few more than we've broadcasted, but it, it, it's a joy to come out here to Grider Stadium and watch these kids. Absolutely. Grider, always a great place to come watch a game. Uh, tremendously historical stadium and great venue, whether you're talking about a middle school game or a high school game, adult league game. Uh, I think we are about ready to go, and we are ready here in the box. And I think we're going to have uh, Dylan Grimes. Or is that Grimes starting off with this short stop? Shortstop for Franklin County, yes. Dylan Grimes, number 13, will be leading off. Uh, see what he can do here against Brody Melt. Looks like this one might be headed down to second from Mr. Tucker. Nice throw down. They'll throw it around the horn. Now, you mentioned Mr. Tucker. What a fantastic catcher. This kid, he's very athletic. He moves around a lot and can and stops the majority of the balls, which is oh so important up here at Mathis Field because of the distance between home plate and the wall. Grime steps in. We're ready for the first pitch from Melton on the night. Gets the sign from Tucker. Deals and delivers. A pop fly, first base side of the field. Nice catch. They're going away by James Sales. One pitch and one out. That's pretty efficient, Chris. I don't think anybody can argue. I mean, that, that's the goal you want. You want three up, three down, and the least number of pitches. So we have Eric Jones, right fielder for Friendly County, coming to the plate. Another righty facing Brody Milton. Brody gets the sign from. Mr. Tucker. 
Here's the pitch. He's swinging. Foul ball out of play. Melton will take the lead on this at bat on the 0-1 count. Back on the rubber. Caden Tucker getting the sign from the bullpen. Melton awaits. And here's the 0-1 pitch. That one's low and in the dirt. Nice stop by Caden Tucker. Yeah. Tucker just does a fantastic job down there on the plate. I mean, he's definitely one of the better catchers in the district. We've got a one and one count with one out. Top of the first, Franklin County batting. Here's the pitch, high and tight. I'm sorry, we'll call that one a strike. I like it, Blue. He painted just the corner of that plate. I mean, just ever so slightly it creeped over. We've got a one-two count. Advantage Melton. Here comes the pitch. Off-speed pitch moves outside. Evens the count at two and two for Eric Jones at the plate. Outfield shades Jones a little bit to right. May tell you a little bit how anticipating the pitch here from Melton on a 2-2. That ball misses a bit outside, Chris. He threw that a little bit out. I was, I was expecting more, a little bit more inside on that throw, but. We got a full count here for Melton against Eric Jones. The top of the first with one out. And the delivery, that one's inside. Oh, inside. Jones will get a free pass on a 3-2 inside pitch. Next for Franklin County, we've got the catcher, number 25, Gavin Hill. Next makes up, his way to the plate. Catcher, number 25, Gavin Hill. Third base coach for the Rebels gives the signs. Everybody's watching. And Hill's a center fielder, isn't he? I mean, it looks like that young man has some power behind him. No question there. Maybe. Maybe. He's ready. Melton from the stretch with Jones on first. Gets a sign in the delivery. Mr. Hill swinging on the first pitch. Fouled out of play. They better be careful over on the track. Uh, the track team practicing, and they better be looking this way when they're on uh, this uh, south side of the, of the track. Now, that one did bounce back over behind the stadium a little bit, but it definitely – I saw those runners stop and take a peek. They were nervous. Melting up 1-0 in this count to Gavin Hill. Pickoff play at first. That was close. But uh, umpire says he got back. And nice pickoff move there by Melton. And there is the possibility that that was just a vantage point that – giving them the benefit of the doubt, but that was so close that he, I, I couldn't tell unless I was standing right there. First base coach for the Rebels looks like he's about to uh, to take first base for uh, Mr. Jones. But we've got an 0-1 pitch again coming from Melton. A nice yes. curveball crosses the plate for an 0-2 count. That's a nice pitch, Chris. It was. It, it doesn't get – I mean, in that one – now – from a pitcher's point of view, it's a nice pitch. From a batter's point of view, not, because it was coming straight outside and then just came right directly across the middle of the plate at the last moment. I mean, nice movement on that one. Melton gets the sign. He pauses, checks first. Here comes yeah. the pitch. It's up high. Ball one to Mr. Hill. This is a one-two count. And Mr. Jones is wanting to move on to second base. Let's see if they can get him in trouble again. All right. We'll watch his lead. You watch with us. We appreciate you being with us here on the Light Tube Sports Network, whether you're watching live or on Channel 23. Melton gets the sign. Here comes the pitch. Another beautiful off-speed pitch. It's, Mr. Hill knew that one was across the plate, Chris. He did. I mean, it – And but that was another one of those. It was coming down from outside the whole time and then just broke right there. I mean, that, but that's why he – Melton's are starting pitcher. Brody just has great control out there. Of course, his dad, if I'm not mistaken, is in the dugout over there for Franklin County right now. Sam Melton in the uh, Franklin County dugout. You are correct, Chris. Another pickoff move. Mr. Jones gets Mr. Melton's attention. Uh, he's back safely. Number 18 is a designated hitter for Franklin County. McKinnon Whitsett, I believe, is 
the yes, pronunciation. Mm -hmm. Two outs here in the top of the first. Melton gets the sign from Tucker. Here's the pitch. Ooh, a little high, a little inside. Uh, McKinnon Whitsett leading this uh, at bat with a 1-0 count. Now, he is their defensive hitter, so I'm expecting he's going to want to launch this ball. He is their designated hitter batting cleanup. Exactly. You know, two is like, hmm. Here's the pitch from Elton. That one catches the plate to even the count at one and one. And we do have a windy day today. We have a windy day, and one of the announcer's papers are flying around the <laughs> press box up here. We won't name names. Melton gets the sign from Tucker, checks Jones at first. And here comes the pitch. Another off-speed pitch. Yes, says Mr. TSSAA. Oh. That'd be a one-two count with two outs. Top of the first, Franklin County batting in this district. Eight triple A, game one of two. On a picture perfect day for baseball. Melton gets the sign. Here's the pitch. Oh, that was Ooh, a little. That was inside. Looked like it almost got uh, white set, but and, but no. And he's not even crowding the plate, so that that was a little bit of a wild pitch for Brody. Of course, he might have just been wanting to you know make Back him, him nervous. Back him up. Two twos is count. Two outs. Deuces are wild. But I'd say that's something he learned from his father. If I remember back when Sam played. That ball's hit down the right field line. It is curving foul. Yep. Mr. Sales will not give that one chase. And he's keeping alive. But that does bring Mr. Jones back to first base. White set back. And ready. Melton getting the sign from Caden Tucker. From the stretch, Jones with not much of a lead. That off-speed pitch, nice nice way to stay alive there by Mr. White Set. Yeah, Whitsett is definitely um, staying alive down there. You know, he's battling. Battling, adding up the pitches to Mr. Melton. Oh, yes. Which, you know, that's if you can't get a good hit off of him, make him work harder. Unfortunately, that's our pitcher out there, but that still, is. Still a 2-2 two -two count. Comes the pitch from Melton. That one's way right. inside, and I believe that he called it a foul ball. Okay, so it, it hit the bat. Foul ball. Mr. Whitsett's wanting to argue. Yeah, you don't argue with a blue. Let the coach do that. It's Third. not the player's job. Coach is, coach is coming to do that now. And I think he might have an argument because it seemed more like it might have got his elbow as opposed – and it deflected off his elbow and hit the bat, not that was hit a, the bat. That was a soft ricochet. As opposed to a batted ricochet. Two umps confer. Original call is going to stand. Mr. White set's going to get back in the box and we'll go again. I, I'm definitely for the call because, you know, it went in Tullahoma's favor. So no question to that. But I don't necessarily agree with the call. Now Coach Morris calls time. Wanting to talk it over to the home plate umpire. And I think that's a fair call. Because, you know, you, you want – in the best interest of the, the kids out there on the field. Just make sure everything's okay. We've got uh, conferences going on all over the field. We've got Coach Morris and the home plate up talking. We've got discussions at first base. And we're going to confer with the uh, – Umpire out in the field again. It would not shock me if they decided to overrule the original call and make it a hit, ball, uh, you know, a hit player and have him take first. Because yeah, it definitely hit the bat after it hit something else, and that something only other thing else it could hit is the player. Well, Mr. Uh, Whitsett says that it hit him on the uh, meaty part of his left hand, his lower hand, as a right-handed batter. Yep. Yeah. And we're going to reset as the original call. And that's a foul ball. Okay. So we'll go back to a 2 2 count, two outs, top of the first. McKinnon White set. Feels like he's been in the box for about 30 minutes. 
But Brody Melton gets the sign, takes the stretch. Jones gets his lead from first, and here's the pitch. There's a comebacker up the middle. Dillahay Second. touches the bag. That's the third out of the That'll inning. Be. The Cats, no runs, no hits, no errors. One man left on. The Cats will come to the plate. You are watching Light 2 Sports Network. This is your internet service at 10 meg speeds. This is internet service at Gigabit. No other local provider can match this level of speed. Call us today to get the world's fastest internet. Welcome back to Grider Stadium, bottom of the first. Jackson Sheffield will lead off for the Cats. Theron Sons is towing the rubber for the Franklin County Rebels in this first game of a doubleheader. Sheffield in the, the box. Here comes first pitch. The ball's wide and outside. Sheffield, uh, center playing, uh, excuse me, left field tonight for the Cats. Here comes the 0 1. I believe he went. That'll even count at 1 and 1 on Jackson Sheffield. Sheffield. Uh, Batting 211 on the season, on the young season. He will uh, look to improve that tonight with probably a good number of bats between, between two games. Looks like we've got a decent crowd coming for uh, this early start. A lot earlier than our typical 6 o'clock start, but glad to see the sunshine. Nice pitch from Suns. Uh, Sheffield swinging. 1-2 count here in the bottom of the first. And let's see. Hill gives Suns the pitch. Gives him the, the, the call. Off-speed pitch. Misses outside. That was nice pitch just off the plate. Evens the count at two and two. He was trying to make Jackson reach out there a little bit, I think. Got uh, Dixon uh, on deck as Suns looks in for the sign. Yep. He liked that pitch. Well, nice pitch. And they're just outside corner. Excuse me, Chris. And that's what I was going to say. They're trying to make uh, – they were trying to make the chef reach out there, and they got him to. And that, Well, they didn't get him to. They got him to look at it. Second baseman, number 10, Jacob Dixon. Leave it sitting there. Dixon into the batter's box, batting second. Second uh, baseman for the Cats. Center fielder shifts to his left, to our right. Towards right field. Here comes the first pitch to Dixon. Off-speed pitch right back up the middle. Nice hit by Dixon. That's a good way to get it going in the bottom of the first. Runner on first with one out. Shortstop, D.J. Dillahay, now batting. And we saw that last Wednesday. It seems that uh, Dixon and combination between Dixon and Dillahay just were a very effective group to get on base. And they can seem to put a ball right where they want it to go, to where they may not get multiple bases, but they get where they need to go. Dillahay batting third for the Cats in this game. Dixon with a nice lead. There's a pickoff move. Dixon back easily. Dixon and Dillahay, both multi-sport athletes here at the high school. Dixon again gets his lead. He's checked by Sons. Here comes the pitch. Ooh. Nice cut by Dillahay. Pulls that one foul well, well foul. Looks like Jason Ray off the That'll be an 0-1 count for Dillahay. You have to excuse comments you may overhear from the uh, <laughs> press box. We have Principal Quick up here with us tonight. Peanut Gallery is large and in charge tonight. Dixon gets his lead. Sons getting the sign. Dillahay awaits. Another pickoff move. They're worried about Dixon running on them, Chris. Well, they should be. I mean, both Dixon and uh, DJ Dillahay as well, they like to move around and not necessarily when they're, a pitcher thinks they're supposed to be. They're quite athletic young men. Gavin giving the sign to Suns. Here's the pitch. That one's low. That evens the count at one and one. Nice take there by Dillahay. He gets the sign from Coach Morse at third base. 
it'll have you back in the box. Center fielder almost dead straight away playing Dillahay. Okay. Again, Dillahay pulls that one foul over the third base dugout. That'll be strike two, though. One ball and two strikes. Got one out in the bottom of the first. And uh, Dixon definitely keeps making Suns a little nervous out there on first base. Suns taking a long look both at Dixon and to his catcher, Hill. He's ready. Here comes the pitch. Dillahay waits. That's a pop-up yep. here between third and the dugout. And it's going to be caught. Dillahay's going to foul out. Nice play there by Roberts. Dillahay will be the second out of the inning for the Cats. That brings number 24, William Zebek, to the plate. He's playing first base on defense for the Cats. Coach Morris give the sign both to he and to Dixon. And that was definitely a credit to Roberts because on a bright day like this, you know, that sun is all in your eyes. As I look around the diamond, all four infielders for the Rebels have their shades on. Probably a smart move. Suns is ready. Here's the first pitch. That one's high. Zebek will take a 1-0 count early in this at bat. Now, Zebek will be on the mound for the next game at Ze 7 o'clock tonight. Zebek will be on the mound for the away portion of this doubleheader. Suns taking a look at Dixon. Gets the sign. Here's the pitch. That one's popped up. up. Straight up. Let's see, Suns is, Suns is thinking about it. it. He's, He's calling, calling it. it. Moving back and makes a good adjustment for so. out number three. So as the Cats uh, finish their inning, we had one hit, had no runs, one runner left on. We'll go to the second. We got no score here on the Light Tube Sports Network. Did you know that Tullahoma Utilities Authority has a solar farm right here in Tullahoma? For as little as $4 a month, you can support solar energy production and breathe a little easier, knowing you're taking positive action to reduce your carbon footprint. Call 455-4515 Back today. to Greider Stadium, headed to the top of the second. We have got second baseman Wyatt Lowe for the Rebels, leading off the half inning. Melton's getting the sign from Tucker from the windup. That one's high and tight. That one will tell you to. That one will tell you to back up a little bit. That's for sure. That's right. The uh, one-zero pitch again, high and tight. That'll be two-zero for low. Low may be against the chalk line in the back of the box on this pitch, Chris. No, he. He gets back in there. Melton back on the rubber from the windup. Getting the call from Tucker. Wind up in the pitch. Oh, oh. he went around. Yep, that, I, I knew that looked like it should have been a strike. That one was high again, but Lowe decided he'd change his mind mid-swing. And you can't really do that. 2-1 count here in the top of the second. Again, oh. a, a carbon copy of the previous pitch and a carbon copy of the previous attempted stop of a swing. That evens the count at two and two. No right. outs, nobody on. <coughs> Low back in the batter's box. Melton's getting the sign. Tucker moves to the outside portion of the plate. There we go. And that's where Melton puts it. Nice pitch, swing and a miss by low. Will be the first out of the inning. And, and honestly, if he had followed through with the previous pitch, he might have actually gotten okay, something. So whereas he County swung at a worse pitch. You are correct. Next up for the Rebels, first baseman Cameron Weaver. And here's the delivery, swing and a miss on a good fastball by Melton. That. Puts Weaver in the hole, 0 and 1. Melton working pretty quickly 
which is an announcer's best friend. <laughs> oh, yes. Another good pitch right down the heart of the plate. Melton takes the lead, and this at bat, 0-2. No, Weaver is the first baseman for Franklin County. Be interesting to see if Melton wastes one on him here. Yes. Yep. Outside. I'll have to get a new baseball after that one. One two count. Yeah, I think that gravel back there might have scarred it up a little bit. Melton ready to go again. Tucker going through the signs. Melton's ready for the pitch. Good pitch. Catches the inside the corner of the plate on a beautiful curve ball. Back-to-back -back strikeouts for Melton here in the top of the second. Beautiful pitch, Chris. Oh, there is no question. I mean, two up, two down in just brilliant fashion. And Brody's not wasting many pitches on this at this portion of the lineup. Now we have, what, Austin Roberts coming in for the third baseman. Third baseman, Austin Roberts. See if he can do some damage here on two outs. First pitch. He was trying to do some damage. Nice cut. Pitch was inside. He missed it. We'll take the strike. 0 and 1. Melton back to the rubber. He gets the sign from Tucker. Uh, I think this one's going to be a little outside. Yep, that one's high. Evens count at 1 and 1. I think he was curious to see if he was only going to get him to swing at that one after that first swing. One and one, the count on Mr. Roberts. Here's the pitch, off oh. speed. He gets him to fish for that one. A one and two count. Now that was that one dropped substantially down at the right there at the plate. Nice pitch by Melton. One and two, the count on Roberts. He's got to cover the whole plate here. He's oh. not able to do it on a high heater. Mr. Melton strikes out the side in the top of the second. The Cats will see what they can do on offense when we come back on the Light Tube Sports Network. Tullahoma Utilities Authority Light Tube Fiber Internet offers true gigabit service to our customers. We pride ourselves on speed, but the backbone of that speed is local tech support, unmatched customer service, and professional service technicians. To sign up, call 455 4515 to gain the reassurance of light tube reliability. We're back with you here from Grider Stadium. Bottom of the right second fielder, inning. James right fielder James Sales will lead things off for the Cats. See if he can get us started here and break this scoreless tie. Sales, one of two seniors on the team this season. First pitch from Suns. Uh, we'll say call to strike. Well, I think it actually was. I think it it, it was a good long curveball came down and curved right out at the edge of the plate. So I'll say Blue Blue may have gotten that one definitely correct, as much as we always want to argue and tell them they're wrong. Pitch from Suns, off-speed pitch again, popped up. Shortstop Grimes camped out underneath it, oh, squeezes yeah. it. First out of the inning. You hate it when those balls go just so high, unless they're carrying. <laughs> But when they just pop straight up. up. Your pitcher, number 17, Brody Melton. Next up for the Cats, pitcher number 17, Brody Melton. He says no thank you to a DH. He'll take care of things himself. He settles in the box. Suns gets the call from Hill. And we are ready. That was pitch outside. Pitch low and outside. Excuse me, Chris. Yes, low and outside, 1-0. Nice way to watch by Milton. And that, there's another multi-sport athlete for you. I mean, he was great to watch on the basketball court this last winter. He was intense. Uh, that one's fi fouled back and out of play. You know, he was going to give you everything he had. And that's definitely one of those things that you see from these uh, – a lot of these Tullahoma kids, is they're just multi-sport athletes. They're very talented, and they're all hard. That foul ball, even the count at one and one. Here comes the one and one off-speed pitch from Suns. Nice pitch. Had Melton swinging. That'll be a one-two count. 
here in the bottom of the second with nobody on and one out for the Cats. Melton's back in there. Suns with the delivery and the pitch, off-speed oh. pitch. Nice hit, drilled by Melton. Third baseman Roberts could not handle it. That one heads towards the dugout, and Melton's headed towards second. Here's the throw to second. Not going to be in time. A double. Nice hit, nice hustle by Melton. And that was a great – I mean, you couldn't have a better hit. I mean, it carried down the third baseline and then broke it just the right time to where it could stay fair. Melton, number 23. Cannon Emery now at the plate. Now we're going to have Emery coming in as a defensive Morris. runner for Melton. So we can get ready to go back out there on the field here in a minute. J. Ron Morris next up to the plate. One on, one out. Morris playing third tonight, today for the Cats. Suns will come from the stretch. With the runner on second. Corners are in just a bit. Maybe expecting a, a bunt. Nice pitch there from Suns. Catches the plate. 0 and 1 to Mr. Morris. Emery gets his lead from second. Here's the delivery from Suns. That ball is lifted to the left field. Send is underneath it. He makes the squeeze for out number two. But that was a great launch. No carry to it. Next up, got the catcher, number two. Walking up to the plate. Caden Tucker. Catcher, number two, Caden Tucker. But Send was definitely ready to catch that ball. Nice play there by Send. Two outs, runner on second for the Cats. Be nice to get him around to take the lead in this afternoon tilt. Tucker from the left side of the plate. He's ready, Suns with the pitch. That ball's outside. And a 1-0 count on Tucker. One thing I've noticed about Suns is he likes to make those lefties stretch out quite a bit. He has worked the outside part of the plate almost exclusively on lefties, on left-hand batters. He's ready again. Here's the pitch again. And uh, got the black part of the plate on that one. And a 1-1 one -one count. But he just barely got the black part <laughs> of the plate on that. I mean, he's still making, making these lefties stretch. 1-1, one -one, two out, runner on second. Bottom of the second. Tucker awaits the pitch. And we are extending the black. Uh, a one hold two. on. How? A one and two count to Mr. Tucker. That was in the line. That one hit a little bit of, that one was on the white line, and I don't mean the white part of the plate. Got a one two count. Mr. Tucker takes a little extra time to clear his head of maybe the call on that one. He's back in there, ready. He'll give him the sign to Suns on a one two pitch. And here we go. A swing and a miss. We leave a man stranded in the bottom of the second. And we'll see what the Rebels can do on offense when we come back for the top of the third on the Light Tube well, Sports Light Network. specifically played into our mission when we separated from our parent company and became an employee stock ownership program. Oh, we had to be disconnected from a large network and exist on our own. We needed relatively high speed connectivity, which we got at about a 200% discount uh, with like two. Businesses can get beyond what most businesses uh, in the country can get from like two uh, as far as uh, internet connectivity. And we're back here on the Light Tube Sports Network, top of the third, leading off for Franklin County. Number one, Anthony Sin. He's a left fielder for Franklin County, and he had a had a really big play last inning. Initial pitch from Melton. Nice hit in the left center. That one falls into the green grass. And he's going to get a first base hit out of first that. First base knock. Duncan uh, keeps him, holds him to a single. Center fielder, number 12, Jacob Hardison. Rounding out the uh, batting lineup for the Rebels. Number 12, center fielder, Jacob Hardison. He'll see what he can do with no outs and runner on first. 
Melton gets the sign. Throws over to first. Runners back easily. Melton waiting on Hardison to get back in, and now he's back. Gets the sign from Tucker. From the stretch, squared around the bunt. There's a pitch down to first. Excuse me. Uh, the move down the first by Tucker. It's close play. He didn't get him. He just made it back. Nice aggressive play there by the catch. And we did have a strike on that play. I almost forgot about that. did have the, a strike. You forget about the pitch when something like that happens, don't you? 0-1 count for Hardison. His first at bat of the evening. He's had a fairly uneventful, you know, game. They haven't been hitting a whole lot out to center field. Moore is creeping in at third, expecting the bunt. There's the bunt, foul ball. That counts as a strike. It's a 0-2 count. Hardison. See what they do. See what they do here, Chris. Uh, with an 0-2 count, he's squared around a couple times. Runner on first. He actually has a 1-2 count. I think he has a, had a ball in the midst of that. I got you. Excuse me. Melton taking a long look at the runner at first. Gets the sign from Tucker. He's going to try him over at first again. And again, the runner's back. One one count on Hardison. And here's the pitch. He squares around again. He gets that one down towards the first baseline. Melton makes the play. Throws to Zebik and gets one. Oh, yes. Nice play there by Melton. Zebik calls time. Melton pounced off the mound. Nice bunt. Nicely placed. Melton with a good play. But you saw that athleticism out of Melton right there. That He's a, he's a good-sized young man, but he can move. He is an athlete for sure. Dylan Grimes, leadoff hitter. Shortstop, Franklin County. Make his second attempt at the plate. Runners at second. It's a short lead. Oh, that curveball started inside and never came back. Runner rounds third, looks at home, and says, I better not, and retreats. I uh, don't think I'd want to try and charge the plate with Melton crossing it, holding it off, because um, was it Hardison? No, that's not hard. Uh, that's a sin. Sin. Sin is third. not near as large as Mr. Melton. 1 0 count. We got it. Melton backs off the mound. One out runner at third for the Rebels. They'll see if they can produce a run here. The corners are playing about normal spot. They just creep in a little bit. That curveball missed high. A 2 0 count. To Dylan Grimes. Dare they attempt a suicide squeeze here, Chris? Let's hope it doesn't come down to that. Here's the pitch. He swings um. and misses. A good pitch from Melton. Looked like a fastball. Two and one the count. One out, runner at third. Dylan Grimes at the plate for Franklin County. Sin with a short lead at third, keeping his eye on Melton. Melton with the pitch. Oh. That ball's fouled out and away, out of the stadium. Even as a count at two and two. Uh, if I were the long jumpers, I think I would move more into the field and get off the track right now. They definitely need a spotter, don't they? I have no question there. Tucker gives a sign. Melton's ready. Here's the 2-2 pitch. Off-speed pitch. Nice hit. Left field. And that's going to send a runner home and get a runner on first. So the Rebels will plate one. Sheffield returns the ball to the infield. Rebels take the lead one to nothing on a one-out RBI single by Dylan Grimes. I was a little surprised they didn't uh, try and go for two on that. but Eric Jones now takes the plate. For the Rebels, one on, one out, one in. 
Stroke back up the middle. That one gets by Duncan. Grimes rounding third. He'll head home and make it easy. Jones headed to third. Here comes the play to Dixon. He'll hold it. Another run in. The Rebels take the lead, two to nothing. Nice hit back up the middle by Jones. A misplay by the center fielder. And we have a runner on third, still with one out. Two across this half inning for the Rebels. Catcher Gavin Hill. Next up for the Rebels. See if Melton can settle down. He definitely needs to. I think those runs have got him rattled a little bit. Oh, yeah. That pitch low and outside. Nice stop by Tucker on a ball in the dirt. Melton, a fast uh, pitcher between pitches. He gets the sign from Tucker from the stretch. Oh. That ball's ripped foul by Mr. Hill. I think that one might have hit Rock Creek. A one and one count to the Franklin County catcher. He struck out in his first at bat. In the first. Melton's ready from the stretch. Here's the pitch. Off speed. Off yep. the end of the bat by Mr. Hill. That'll give Brody a one and two advantage. And I think after he, you know, you notice these last couple of pitches, he kind of took a little bit more of a moment between them. So I think he's collecting himself. I think that's a wise move by a smart athlete. He gets the sign, the one-two pitch. Ball's high and outside. Evens the count at two and two. Gavin Hill looks down for a sign. Third, third base coach shakes his head as I say, hit the ball. Melton looks in for the sign. Tucker going through the motions. Melton ready. And here's the pitch. Good pitch from Melton. Fastball a little bit up and in. Hill swings and misses for out number two of the inning. So we've held that runner on third. Nice hold there. Now batting for Franklin County. The designated hitter, McKinnon White set. And he's their defensive hitter. So he's pitching for Suns. He's hitting for Suns, correct. Or First pitch. That one's a pop up. Left and field. Out. Sheffield camps underneath it and makes the play for out number three. No more damage for the Rebels. We'll move to the bottom of the third inning with the Rebels leading two to nothing. You're on the LightTube Sports Network. Does your family love to stream movies and use multiple Wi-Fi enabled devices? But are you finding out that your run-of-the-mill router simply can't keep up? Don't worry, LightTube has you covered with our internet router service for only $9.95 per month. Get back to what your family loves doing. Call us today at 455-4515 to learn more. We're back on Mathis Field at Grider Stadium. Leading off the bottom of the third for the Cats. Center fielder number nine, Joe Duncan. Sun still on the mound for the Rebels. First pitch to Duncan. That one's wide of the plate. Duncan will take a 1-0 advantage in this at bat. Suns is ready. For a 1-0 pitch. Another one outside. That one outside. And, and it definitely seems like the umpire is calling this one a little more accurately than he did against Tucker. I, I paused just a moment to make sure that hand wasn't going to go up based on previous experience. The two O's driven down the left field line. That one's going to slice foul. Jumps the fence. That young man that's chasing the ball will have to chase a little... Different direction. And we shouldn't be so hard on the Blues, but, you know, it happens when it's your team out there on the field. The 2-1 pitch from Suns to Duncan. That one's wide again. 3-1. and one. 
Here is Duncan leads off the bottom of the third for the Cats. Duncan back in the batter's box. Suns gets the sign from Hill. And here comes the pitch. Outside again. He's going to be walking to first base. Duncan draws a walk. Back to the top of the lineup. Your left fielder, number 32. Back Jackson to the top of the lineup Sheffield. for the Cats. Left fielder, number 32, Jackson Sheffield. Back-to-back -back lefties here in the bottom of the third for the Cats. He'll see if he can move along, Mr. Duncan. Sheffield and Duncan both get the sign from Coach Morris down the third baseline. Sheffield in the box. Suns takes a courtesy look over at Duncan. Duncan widens his lead. Duncan's gone. Is he going to make throw. it? Yep. Duncan's in safely. Catcher double clutched on that throw, Chris. Allowed Duncan to steal that base safely. And that's one thing. Had Hill been just a moment faster, that would have been a different play. But uh, fortunately, he was just a little slow. We'll take it. No outs. Runner on second for the Cats. Bottom of the third inning. And if I'm not mistaken, that was a ball, wasn't it? That was a ball. That was high and outside. 1-0 pitch on the way to Sheffield. And that, that was one, a strike. That pitch was high, I believe, Chris. Oh, it was high. It was down the middle, but high. That's one thing about this upward high vantage point. You can't nearly necessarily tell up and down, but you can see where it is placed. Where it crosses the plate. That's right. Sheffield with the advantage in this at bat. Sun steps off the rubber, and we'll do it all again. Two-zero pitch from Suns. Sheffield awaits. That one's way outside. Outside. Three-zero advantage. Sheffield. We'll see if Coach Morris gives Sheffield the green light, or if he's got the take. Duncan with the lead. Suns gets his sign. That's outside. High and outside. First two batters of the inning on for the Cats. And I think that's a smart move by Hill. He's like, Son, Mr. Suns, we need to have a conversation. Hill meeting his pitcher on the mound. They're discussing the situation and how they want to face Jacob Dixon for the Cats. At the plate, number 10, second baseman. Now Dixon Jacob got a good Dixon. hit last at bat. Dixon with a hit first time around. We'll get to see if he can do the same thing with two men on and nobody out. And honestly, if he got a hit like he did the last time, I would definitely see Joe Duncan making it in for a score. Duncan, a very quick runner. Dixon's ready. Suns gets the sign. Here's the pitch. Oh. Duncan's on the way. Both runners are moving. That's a foul ball left of third. Hit and run on for the Cats. We'll call that strike one. And you have very two very good and precise batters. You got, you know, uh, Jacob Dixon up right now, and then you have D.J. Delahaye following him up. So you have two really good, really precise hitters. So if they can get a good pitch they like, they can put the ball almost where they want it. Dixon leads the team in batting average. Batting over 500 on the season. He squares. There's a pop-up bunt. That's trouble. But oh, he'll, he's out. He'll makes a nice catch. That'll be out number one for the Cats. A nice play by the catcher on a pop-up and a, on a bunt attempt by Dixon. That's definitely what you don't want your bunt to do is go that high. Because, unfortunately, it gives the, the catcher the or pitcher a option to come up and catch Dillahay. it. D.J. Dillahay will see what he can do against Mr. Suns here in the bottom of the third with one out and two runners on. D.J. popped up to the third baseman in his first at bat. See if he can straighten things out in this at bat. Try to even the score. Off-speed pitch misses high from Suns. That will lead to a 1-0 count to D.J. Dillahay. Looks down to third to get the signs from Coach Morris. He's back in the box. Sun's looking for signs. Hill's looking for signs from the dugout. 
Now we're ready. Checks Duncan at second. Here's the pitch. Oh. Swung on. Right field. There Jones underneath it. There, makes yep. the catch. Duncan will tag from second and go to third. They'll be scored a fielder, excuse me, a sacrifice fly by DJ Dillahay. That gives us two outs on in the inning. Runners on the corners from the Cats. And number 24, William Zebek. We'll see what he can do with two outs for the Cats. Well, you know, Zebek's batting cleanup for the Cats right now, so. I'd like to see him uh, move Duncan to the plate to cut this lead for the Rebels. Uh, no question there. No question. Well, that's like I know Wednesday night, Brody Melton had a home run. In Coffee County, I believe. No, in Tullahoma. At home, against, okay. Against Coffee County, though. First pitch to Zebek is a strike. Sheffield, excuse me. Yeah, Sheffield uh, looked like he was going to make the move from first to second. That was a decoy. 0-1 count to Zebek. Boy, it would be nice for him to find some outfield green grass right here, Chris. It would be, you know, and if not Sheffield clear the fence, on the move. get to it. Excuse me, Chris. Sheffield on the move. The pitch from Suns, low and outside. Evens count at one and one. Cats now with runners at second and third and two outs. Zebek at the plate. Suns looking to his catcher. Gavin Hill. We're going to step off the mound and try this one again. And sometimes that's the best thing to do is you just have to drop back and collect yourself. It's better to get it right than to hurry up and get it wrong in this situation. Mr. Sons is ready. Here's the one and one oh, to Zebek. That one's called a strike. Right. <clears throat> one two count on Zebek. I could tell that one was close on that outside corner. But I can just barely not see the plate because of the catcher's head. Zebek steps out and back in as catcher and pitcher for Franklin County are trying to get together on the pitch. He'll go through the motions again, and here's the pitch. Oh, a check swing, and he went around. That'll end the inning for the Cats, leaving runners at second and third. We'll head to the fourth with the Rebels leading two to nothing. You're on the Light Tube Sports Network. Tell your pa, tell your sister, tell your dog, all right. We gotta get it together, together. I'm crazy for you, crazy. I'm so crazy for you, all right. I'm crazy for you, crazy. I'm so crazy for you, all right. I'm sick of feeling blue, blue. Crazy for you, crazy for you. I'm so crazy for you, all right. Back to Grider Stadium on a beautiful Tuesday afternoon. District 8 AAA matchup between the visitors from Franklin County, your home team Wildcats. Top of the fourth, leading off for Franklin County. Second baseman Wyatt Lowe. Brody Milton still on the hill for the Cats. Tucker gives him the sign from the windup. Milton's delivery. That Ooh. one's going to hit Mr. Lowe square on the backside. And leadoff runners aboard for the Rebels. And not how you want to start the top of an inning, Chris. No, definitely not. I mean, last. Play for Franklin County, first baseman, number 15. I see. Uh, I think Brian Morris was trying to settle Brody down. There was a, some eye contact made between the two of them. Next up for the Rebels, be first baseman, number 15, Cameron Weaver. Low is on first. Now, Weaver likes to crowd that plate. I expect uh, Brody to brush him back a little here. Weaver with a strikeout, his first attempt. Low's gone. That pitch is high. Gets by Tucker. Low will stop at second. That was off the top of his glove. He'll be upset with himself that that one got by him. Low down at second on a ball. I think he caught the back side of the bat when it when Weaver stopped his turn. So 
So we've got a 1-0 count. And a runner on second. A runner on second for Weaver. Melton from the stretch. Zebic playing up at first. Uh, Weaver swinging away. Foul tip straight back. That'll even the count at one and one. Both corners playing in just a little bit. Zebic in a little. And Chef a is little also. further than Morris. Melton's ready. Takes a good look at low. Oh, that was behind. That pitch behind Weaver. That'll be a 2 1 count. And we don't have anyone over there warming up. Nobody in the bullpen for the Cats currently. This so. is Mr. Melton's inning, it would appear. No question of that. Which, I mean, it should be. I mean, I don't think these. All speed pitch, beautiful pitch from Melton. That's something you don't you don't see this a whole lot from Brody, so it is a little uncharacteristic. I didn't expect him to settle back down and get into it. Nice pitch to even the count. Two on two, two and two on Cameron Weaver. Here's the pitch. Right oh. down the middle. And Weaver swings and misses for out number one for the Cats. Melton yeah. wanting to talk to Tucker, see how they're going to play. Mr. Roberts here. Austin Roberts will be batting for Franklin County. He's their third baseman. At the plate, number three, third baseman, Austin Roberts. And the meeting on the mound has ended. Tucker makes his way back behind the plate. Looking over at the dugout for a sign. Again, runner on second, one out. Top of the fourth, Rebels leading two to nothing. Melton is ready. Checks his runner. And the pitch. Oh. That one's back up the middle. Second baseman Dixon makes the play. Throw to first. first. Nice play for out number two for the Cats. Downside that is you had uh, uh, Weaver, low. or is it Lowe? Lowe, yes, sir. Lowe advanced over there to third. That'll go down as moving the runner over on a sack. Now batting for Franklin County, Anthony Sin, their left fielder. Two outs, runner on third. We'd like to leave him hanging there if we could. Oh. That pitch. Outside, gets, hitting the batter. Gets the batter on the left leg, on the lead leg, and he'll take first. And that'll bring us back to the top of the order. And number 12, Dylan Grimes. Now at the plate, center fielder, number 12, Jacob Hardison. I'm sorry. I'm a batter ahead of myself. Jacob Hardison, ninth batter in the lineup for the Rebels. And Hardison uh, has had a pretty decent evening. Here's the first pitch. Inside. Inside and a little high from Melton. A 1-0 and count. 1-0 count. Top of the fourth. Infielders playing at Regular depth with two outs. Melton ready from the stretch. Checks the runner at first. Here's the off-speed pitch. That one catches the plate. Evens the count at one and one. Hardison checks third base coach back in the box. Melton looks to Tucker for the sign. Checks his runner at first from the stretch. And the pitch. Outside. That one's called strike two. On the outside of the plate, just barely caught that front corner. Outside corner, Cats and Cats fans will take it. Oh, no question. Well, that's where you want it, you know. Make them reach out. One and two count. Two outs, two runners on. Melton's ready. Here's the pitch. All-speed pitch misses high. Evens the count at two. Now, one thing I'm not seeing, I remember Hart, Hardison's last at bat, he kept trying to bunt. He's not trying to do that this this go around. Two outs might be the reason on on that. He needs to needs a hit to push this runner across. Especially when you have a runner on first and third. Oh. Little, 
Swinging, swinging a miss. Striking out number three for the Rebels. In the top half of the fourth, we'll see if the Cats can push a few across to even the score. We go to the bottom of the fourth. Franklin County Rebels leading the Cats two to nothing on the Light Tube Sports Network. You want to dance? Check out Stingray Music on TV. Now available, the new Stingray Music mobile app. Free with your TV subscription. Stingray Music, all good vibes. And welcome back to Grider Stadium. We head to the bottom of the fourth. Cats will take their swings. They'll be led off by right fielder. James Sells. James Sells. Son still on the mound for the Rebels. Settled down and pitched a nice game. Had one inning. Had a little bit of trouble. Got out of that jam. First pitch to Sales is high and a 1-0 count. We'll take that. Cats with a little action down in the bullpen. Cannon Emery down there warming up. Here's the 1-0 pitch to Sales. That one's outside. 2-0. Son's not giving Sales anything to swing at yet, Chris. No, he hadn't. You know, I'd have figured he at least brought that curveball of his in that likes to break inside, but he hadn't even done that. Oh. That one's hit to right field. That's going to get by Jones. I, th I, th I see Sales it. Sales is on his horse. He rounds second. He's headed for three, and he's going to be there standing up. The wheels are good on that young man. We'll take a leadoff triple. Nice hit to the opposite field by Sales to lead off the inning. That'll bring up, up pitcher, pitcher Brody, Brody Melton. Brody Melton. He's appreciative of that leadoff hit. Oh, no question. From Sales. And uh, last Wednesday, Melton launched one over left center field. So it'd be nice to see something like that happen again. Melton in the box. Suns is ready. Here's the pitch. Outside. That, that one high and outside. Melton takes the advantage in this at bat. Sales with the lead at third. Here comes the 1-0 pitch. Melton with a good cut. Fouls it straight back to the screen. Evens the count at 1-1. One Again, this is a eight triple A district matchup between these longtime rivals, and probably have the two nicest field in the dis fields in the district. Of course, they're both former professional baseball stadiums. Both former minor league stadiums. Suns is ready from the windup. That ball is low and outside. He all had to. Reach for that one a little bit. That would have been nice to have uh, gotten past him and get Mr. Sales home for the first run of the game for the Cats. But we'll try again with Mr. Melton at the plate with a 2-1 advantage. Nobody out. Runner on third. Suns from the windup with a runner on third. Off-speed oh. pitch. Melton with a swing and a miss. Nice pitch there by Mr. Suns. Evens the count at 2-2. Two and two. Melton choking up on the bat. Two strikes. Suns looks in for the sign. He's ready. Here's the wind up in the pitch. Melton stays alive with a nice cut. Yeah, that one's bouncing. It looked like it almost hit the top of the Finley County bus back there. Where'd you park, Chris? Oh, I'm way out there, so not my first rodeo. All right, Melton back in. He'll try again on a 2-2 count. Sun's taking his time. Now he's ready. The wind-up, the delivery, the pitch. Oh. Off-speed pitch gets Melton swinging for the first out of the inning for the Cats. At the plate, 
And you can see a little bit of frustration on Brody's face as he walks off the field. Certainly. Certainly. He would have loved to have gotten sales back across the plate. But it'll be up to J. Ron Morris at this point. More, uh, Morris flew out to left field his first at bat. A sack fly would work in this situation as well. Here's the pitch. The ball's outside. That'll lend itself to a 1-0 count for J. Ron Morris. Suns is ready from the windup. Off-speed pitch is called a strike. strike. Evens the count at one and one. That's the only thing I can't offer commentary because between the umpire and the catcher, I just can't see that outside corner all the time. They call that a chalk strike. That oh. one's straight up. Will it reach the seats? Foul ball. Oh. Uh, Hill was giving chase. That one must have caught the net on its way down. Now It'll that the one, you know, with the the downside of the behind the plate here at Mathis Field is there's so much room to the wall. On the upside, it does give this um, catcher that chance to go and catch a fly fly ball behind them. Exactly. Unfortunately, that'll count as strike two on Jaron Morris. Suns is ready. Here's the pitch. That one's chopped to third. Oh, it dropped. Roberts not able to make the play. The throw is late. Runners across. Sales counts for run number one for the Cats. The Cats will take it. Cuts the lead of the Rebels in half. Two to one, bottom of the now fourth. Up to the plate. And only one out. Only one plate. out. Number two, Caden Tucker. Caden Tucker with a catcher. Number two. We'll see what he can do. He's robbed a little bit at his last last at bat, I believe. So let's hope he can get some payback on this one. Officially a strikeout. Yes, and Tucker's it was. first at bat. He'll see what he can do with one on and one out here in the bottom of the fourth. The first pitch is lowered inside from Suns. Morris gets his lead from first. Sons gets his sign from Hill. Here's the pitch. Swing. Mm. That pop up is past third. Oh, and, and a nice off. play by Sin to come in and make the catch. Morris retreats to first. Out number two of the inning for the Cats. We'll bring Joe Duncan, center fielder, up to the plate Next for the Cats. The Wildcats. Center fielder number now, nine, Joe. Duncan. At okay. his last at bat was left standing on third base, so correct. Duncan with a walk and a stolen base in his first at bat. We need a hit right here. With two outs and a runner on first. Suns is ready from the stretch. First pitch is high. Duncan looks down at Coach Morris. See if there's anything cooking besides a swing away. J. Ron Morris with a lead from first. Suns gets a sign from the stretch, and here's the pitch. Oh. That ball's high. Morris on the way to second. He's got it. And he's safe. Gets in underneath the tag, moving into scoring position. Coach Morris rolling the dice here, getting his runner into scoring position, giving Duncan a better opportunity to drive him home. Now that's one thing I do enjoy about watching these Wildcats under Mo under Brian Morris is they are an aggressive group. They will take some of those risks. Oh. There's a 2-0 pitch to Duncan. Swing and a miss. Strike number one. Duncan in the box. Suns is ready. Here's the pitch. There's a foul ball over the Cats' dugout, headed towards the creek. I don't think that one quite made it, but uh, that foul ball earlier, I think, 
quite possibly at least bounced and hit the creek. It might not have carried to the creek, but it definitely had the potential to bounce there. Again, we've got a scoreboard full of twos. Two balls, two strikes, two outs. Runner on second with Joe Duncan at the plate. And we've got a balk. Pitcher dropped the ball while he's on the rubber. Suns will be upset at himself over that. The Cats will take it. Drop the ball while he's in the stretch position. That allows Morris to take third and might just rattle the pitcher. And that's, I think, what we're hoping for here. Sun's back on the rubber, gets the sign. Here he comes. That, oh. Off speed pitch. Catches the plate. Duncan goes down for out number three. As we end the fourth inning, the Cats cut into the lead. But the Rebels still lead 2-1 to one as we head to the fifth on the Light 2 Sports Network. Tullahoma Utilities Authority now has a branch at 501 West Lincoln Street. The drive through only branch located in the Old Citizens Tri-County Bank will be open on Utility and Light 2 Bill due dates and the day before and after a TUA observed holiday. Check a complete list of dates at TullahomaUtilities.com. Welcome back to the Light 2 Sports Network from beautiful Grider Stadium, Jerry Mathis Field, and Ben's Jordan Press Box. We head, excuse me, Chris. Go right on. We head to the top of the fifth inning. Leadoff batter for the Rebels will be their leadoff batter, Dylan Grimes. Leading off, number 13, Dylan Grimes. He is a shortstop for the Franklin County Rebels this evening. Melton still on the mound here in the top of the field, fifth for the Cats. He gets the sign from Tucker from the windup and the pitch. The ball's outside. A throwback from Tucker to Melton also outside. Mm -hmm. Melton retrieves it. One-zero -oh count. Melton's ready. Morris in on the grass at third. Good pitch. Nice pitch from Melton. Outside fastball. Catches the corner. Evens the count at one and one. Still action down in the Cat bullpen. Cannon Emery, I believe still Cat down there. Off-speed pitch from Melton. Catches the plate. Beautiful pitch. Strike two to Mr. Grimes. And that's the thing, you know, you just want to be, in case you have to bring the young Emery in, you just want to be ready. But it seems that Brody's settled in and gotten over his little bit of jitters there from a couple of innings ago. Here's a 1-2 pitch from Melton. Fastball outside. Evens the count at 2-2. Two two and two. Melton back on the rubber. Tucker with the sign setting up outside. Here's the pitch. Off-speed pitch. Back up the middle. That one's going to fall for a base hit. Duncan retrieves and gets back in to Dixon. Nice piece of hitting there by Dylan Grimes. Next up for the Rebels, number 11. Yeah, he right dropped it right Eric in. Jones. That little sweet spot between the dirt and the center fielder. Eric Jones be next up for the Rebels. He's hit by pitch in the first inning. Had a hit in his second at bat. Had a good night at the plate for the Rebels. Melton from the stretch. Grimes with a good lead off first. Melton's going to check him out. Grimes slides back in safely. Melton back in stretch position on from the rubber. Zebek holds Grimes on at first. There goes, goes back again. That was a little closer. Grimes still back in there safely. Coach Shaw taking us in from the track this afternoon. Melton gives Grimes a look over at first. Grimes takes a toe back towards first. 
A long look by Melton. Oh. Jones squares around. Oh. To bunt. Jones, uh, he didn't the, get up and run. The, pl the uh, move from Tucker back to first as he thought Jones was a little wayward from the bag. Uh, actually hit Grimes as he made his way back to first. Didn't get uh, far enough away from Zebic for Grimes to advance to second. Cat's lucky on that set of events. That was very lucky. Melton's ready for the 1-0 pitch. Back over. Man, Grimes has got his attention. He's back again. Grimes with a shorter lead this time. Melton ready. Jones squares around. Good bunt to pitcher. Melton goes to second. Gets the man at second. Nice heads up play by Melton to get the lead runner. Grimes out at second. Jones will be taking over the spot at first base. First out for the Rebels as the catcher Gavin Hill will be next up for the Rebels. Nice play to get the lead runner there by Melton. Nice awareness of game situation. Yeah, no question there. And it looks like Brody's definitely settled down a lot more from that those jitters he had mid-game. He'll swing on the first pitch. Fouls it straight back. That'll be an 0-1 count. Got time called here by... They the decided, cats. They decided they want to have a conversation out there. Caden Tucker decided he needed to have a conversation with Brody. The dugout's paying a lot of attention to what's happening in the bullpen right now. Hill's back in there. Brody's back on the rubber. Checking out Jones at first. Zebic holds him on. Center fielder Duncan shaded a little to the right. There's a check swing. Runner moves to second. Uh, check swing. And home plate umpire has to ask if that was a check strike and was called a ball. One and one count, one out. Now a runner at second for Gavin Hill. Hill's ready at the plate. Melton ready on the mound. Gets the sign. Checks in on Jones. Here's delivery. Off-speed pitch. Nice pitch from Melton. That'll be strike two on Gavin Hill. Nice off-speed pitch from Melton. See the wind catching the flag and the signs along the outfield wall. Game time, the wind was a brisk 15 miles an hour. I think uh, Gavin Hill just tried to ice Brody a little <laughs> bit. He took some time outside of the box, for sure. Melton's ready. Checks on Jones at second. The pickoff play is on. Jones back safely. Jones does like to stretch that uh, lead out pretty good. Everybody back in their normal spot. As Dixon came over from second on that pickoff attempt. Brody gets the sign. He's ready. He checks one more time on Jones. And again. Comes the pitch. That was low. That'll even the count at two and two. Gavin Hill with a seemingly lengthy at bat. Between a check swing, questionable call, stolen base, an attempted pickoff play, lengthens his at bat. Melton's ready on a 2 2 pitch. Ooh, All speed pitch outside. gets by Tucker. Jones will make his way down to third. That was an off speed pitch that just moved 
away from Tucker too far for him to grab. That puts a runner at third with one out. And you know Gavin Hill for the Rebels is licking his chops, knowing that he's got a 3-2 count and a runner at third. No question there. Now, I see Coach uh, Sheffield over there in the bullpen making some. Melton steps off and back on to the rubber. Gavin's back. Gavin Hill back in the box for the Rebels. Gets the sign from Tucker, and we are ready for a 3-2 pitch. The pitch oh, outside. misses outside. Puts runners on the corners for the Rebels. And with only one out. Now with the plate, designated hitter, number 18, McKeon Whitsett. The batter is announced, but Coach Morse makes his way towards the playing field. I think he's just going to check on his pitcher and see if, see how he's doing because we see Coach Chef and relief pitcher Cannon Emery walking down from the bullpen. So we'll see what's about to happen. Uh, he, it looks like Emery's walking towards, so we're going to see Brody leaving the game. So Melton will leave the game uh, on top of the fifth. So four and a third. For Melton in this start, really a quality start. A one tough patch in the third inning, plates two for the Rebels. Melton will be replaced by number 23, Cannon Emery. We'll be back right after this on the Light Tube Sports Never Network. Never miss your favorite shows again. For an additional $12 a month, along with your digital television service, Light Tube. Cloud DVR lets you record up to eight programs at the same time. Receive 500 gigabytes of cloud storage and whole home DVR. Call TUA customer service to add light to cloud DVR to your digital television service today at 455-4515. We're back with you here on the light Tube sports network. Still on the top of the fifth. As we went to break a change of pictures for the cats. As Brody Milton pitches four and a third. Cannon Emery will come in in relief with runners on the corners for the Rebels, one out. Next up for the Rebels designated hitter, McKinnon Whitsett. Whitsett grounded out to the pitcher in his first at bat and popped out to left field in his second attempt. Tucker gives the defense the signals on how they're playing runners at the corner corners with one away. Infield, maybe a step in. Comes the pitch. Strike on the outside portion of the plate from memory. We'll take two more of those, please. And that pitch did not look as fast as it sounded when it hit the glove. Good pop on the mitt. Emery back on the rubber. Tucker gets the sign from the dugout, gives the sign to Emery on the mound. The runners take their lead. Not a big lead on either base. Oh, Emery hey. steps off. He looked like he was ready and... At the last second, said, let's try this one more time. Well, I think that's a return of favor from that move from Gavin Hill a moment ago where he iced Brody Melton. And, and we're ready to go again on an 0-1 pitch from Emory. Pick off it, attempt it first. Pinch runner in for Hill. Back in safely. Emory toes the rubber, gets the sign from Tucker. Back to first again. Awfully concerned about that pinch runner, especially with runners at the corners.
Emery's got his pitch from his catcher from the stretch position. Here comes the pitch. Swung on. It's going to make it to left field. Jones will come around to score. Runners will be at first and second with one out for the Rebels. They retake their two-run advantage here in the top of the fifth. At the plate for two on and, and one out. Wyatt Lowe makes his way to the plate for the Rebels. Lowe with a strikeout and a hit by pitch previously in this game. See what he can do here in the fifth with two on and one out. The first pitch to him is high and outside. Low is in the box. Emery is ready. Nice pitch. That was a really solid pitch right there. Outside half of the plate. Evens count at one and one. Outfield in a step with a runner at second and one out and a two-run disadvantage for the Cats. Here's the pitch. That one's low. Catches the red dirt. Just outside. Two and one count for Wyatt Lowe for the Rebels. Tucker with the sign. Emery's ready. Checks on his runner at second. Here's the pitch. That one's fouled over the right field dugout out of play. Brings in two strikes. Evens the count at two and two to Wyatt Lowe. Evan Tomlin strolls down towards the bullpen for the Cats. And the pitch. Off-speed pitch misses high. Raises a full count. Gives us a full count. It's exactly right, Chris. 3-2-1. Three, Three balls, two strikes, one out. For the Rebels, top half of the fifth. Emory gets his sign. Here's the pitch. Good. That one must have been low. It loads them up for the Rebels. We will have for the Rebels, Cameron Weir, their Next Weaver, up. their Cameron first Weaver, baseman, first base. up with the bases loaded and one out. This is definitely not, not what you want to see when you're a pitcher. This is not the way you draw it up as the coach of the Cats. Infield moves in. Bases loaded and one out. Outfield in as well. This is where you rely on that man behind the plate. A nice stop there by Caden Tucker. Ball one in the dirt. Tucker's doing a great job behind the plate. The pitch from Emery. Yeah. Low again. Ball two. Gives the Rebels a 2-0 advantage in a critical situation. You want to keep this close. You want to keep these runners exactly where they are with one out. The pitch from Emery right down the middle. Looked like Weaver might have been taken all the way on that one. He didn't even attempt to flinch his bat. 2-1 count. One out. Bases loaded. Top of the fifth from Grider Stadium. Emory gets the sign from Tucker. And here's the pitch. Rise outside. That ball low and outside. 3-1 count. For the first baseman for the Rebels. Emory takes a moment to compose himself. Now toes the rubber and looks in to Caden Tucker. He's ready and the pitch will be high. We'll walk one in. That'll give Franklin County a four to one lead here in the top of the fifth. Now 
plate, third baseman, number three, Austin And Roberts. that brings Austin Roberts for the Rebels to the plate. Same situation. Bases are loaded. One man out. We're needing a comebacker to the pitcher is what we're needing right here, Chris. No question there. Just a, 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 a solid double play is all we need right now. All-speed pitch is high from Emory. Falls behind Austin Roberts. Brian Morse calls timeout and is making his way to the mound. And looks like we might be getting another pitcher. Looks like Evan Tomlin may be making his way either to the mound or back to the dugout. He's making his way from the bullpen towards the dugout. He kind of veers to his left. He's making his way to the mound, Chris. Yes, he is. He will replace Cannon Emery. And Evan Tomlin will take some warm-up tosses, and we'll be right back with you here on the Light Tube Sports Network. This is your internet service at 10 meg speeds. This is internet service at Gigabit. No other local provider can match this level of speed. Call us today to get the world's fastest internet. We're back with you here from Grider Stadium, Mathis Field. Pitching change for the Cats. Freshman number 18, Evan Tomlin. In in a pressure cooker situation. Bases loaded. One out. District matchup. His first pitch to Roberts. Swing and fouled off. It takes an O, excuse me, a 1-1. I believe we're 0-1. 1-1. 1-1, excuse one and one. me. Can't do this. Off-speed pitch finds the plate from Tomlin. Beautiful pitch. And that is dropped down and right in with the sweet spot. Robert's knees did a little buckling on that one. We'll take back-to-back -back strikes for a 1-2 count. One out, bases loaded, top of the fifth. Here's the pitch, off-speed pitch, misses high to even the count at two and two. Obviously, cat defense still playing up in case there's a play needed to come home. Tomlin's oh. fastball was in the catcher's mitt almost before Roberts decided it was time to swing. Big strike out there for Tomlin, out number two in the top of the fifth. Now, Tomlin's a freshman pitcher, so it's one thing on situations like this, like welcome to high school baseball with the bases loaded and down three runs. That's right. Pressure cooker situation for sure. Sin sends the ball through the right side of the cat infield. He'll play at least one. Coach for the Rebels holds runner at third. Nice piece of aggressive hitting there by Sin for the Rebels. That uh, run coming across extends the lead to 5-1 to one for the Rebels. Jacob Hardison, center fielder for the Rebels. Again, bases loaded. Now with two outs, the pitch from Tomlin. Off-speed pitch misses high. 1-0 count. Tomlin's a freshman, Chris, but he has got some gas to the fastball. He does, no question. He's ready. A swing and a tip foul ball. Evens the count at one and one. He definitely has some gas in the tank on that ball. Especially for a freshman. Tomlin gets the sign. He's ready. Here's the pitch. Swing and a miss by Hardison. 
Tomlin with the advantage in this situation with a 1-2 count. He gets a sign. He's ready from the stretch. Off-speed pitch misses high. Deuces are wild again, Chris. Two balls, two strikes, two outs. Bases loaded. Top of the fifth. Need to curtail the damage at this point. And Tomlin's honestly been really settled and yes. handling this situation since he came in. Absolutely. So there you but It was a foul. Foul tip that caught Blue right in the old coconut. And uh, Tucker will give him some time to get his thoughts together. And I think after this. That. Is, and I honestly think this is just a break for Tucker. Uh, I don't think he's really having a serious conversation with Tomlin because there's no reason to. But after having to stretch and move like he has been this game, I'm sure Tucker is just. I need to stretch my legs for a moment and giving Blue a minute to uh, recompose himself after. Foul tip straight into the face mask. Tucker back to the plate. We've got a 2 2 count, two outs. Again, top of the fifth, the base is loaded. Franklin County leading this game 5 to 1 in a day night home and away doubleheader, if you will. Tomlin gets the sign from Tucker and the pitch. Fastball. Hit through the hole oh. between short and third. One man in. And they're going to hold the runner at third. And we're going to replay it as we got bases loaded. Two outs. The Rebels played it four in this half inning to take a 6-1 to one lead over the Wildcats. At the plate, number 13, shortstop, Dylan Grimes. Franklin County back to their leadoff position. Shortstop, Dylan Grimes. See what he can do here with two outs. First pitch from Tomlin's outside. I definitely don't envy uh, Tomlin's predicament at this moment. Uh, there we that go. one's popped up. First base side. Will it be short of the dugout? Zebit giving Chase a good play to end this inning that the Cats so desperately needed out number three. The Cats will go to the home half of the fifth, needing some runs. You're listening and watching the Light Tube Sports Network. Did you know that Tullahoma Utilities Authority has a solar farm right here in Tullahoma? For as little as $4 a month, you can support solar energy production and breathe a little easier, knowing you're taking positive action to reduce your carbon footprint. Call 455-4515. And we welcome today. you back here on the Light Tube Sports Network. We head to the bottom of the fifth inning. Bottom of the fifth, number 32. Lead off batter for the Cats. Jackson Sheffield. Left fielder, Jackson Sheffield. See what he can do here against Sons. First pitch catches the out side half of the plate. And I can't even argue. I was watching that pitch and it it was right there. 0 oh, 1 count here for Jackson. Off speed pitch misses outside. high and outside. Evens the count at 1 and 1. You wonder how much longer Franklin County will stick with Sons as he's. Here made it to the bottom of the fifth. The pitch from Suns to Sheffield, a swing and a miss. Thought maybe foul tipped that one, but no dice. One two count. It looked more like he was trying to go golfing on that swing. It was a little low. Suns is ready. Here's the pitch. That one misses outside. Evens the count at two and two. Cats need some base runners here, Chris. No question. I mean, we've got a, you know, four-run deficit or five-run de deficit, excuse me, to make up for. On the upside, you know, Suns has got to be getting a little bit tired out there. Off-speed pitch fouled right back over our heads. Ah, it was caught by the tree. And that evens us back out again with a 2-2 two -two count.
Sheffield's ready. Suns gets the sign from Hill and the pitch. Oh, swinging pop up, up high, just to the second base side of second. Excuse me, the first base side of second. Nice play there. The second By baseman. The second. At the plate now for the They're Wyatt base. Low. Second baseman, second baseman Wyatt Low. He's had a good game. He really and truly has. I, I was hoping the center fielder was going to come up a little farther there because you know they when they move that much. Get a little out of rhythm on your catching, but yeah, so I saw a second. I saw low back there, and I was like, ah, oh, it's not going to go well. Jacob Dixon will try to get things headed in the right direction this half inning for the Cats. So he takes the first pitch for a strike from Suns. Puts him in the hole 0 and 1. Swung on, popped up. Center field. Center fielder is underneath it. For out number two, not the way you want to start the first two batters. I mean, great hits, but just too much hang time. We'll see what DJ Dillahay can do here with two outs and nobody on. Wildcats, shortstop number 21, DJ Dillahay. This is definitely a young man that can do a whole lot with very little. I mean, on the first pitch, there's a drive. Left field. Left fielder headed back to the wall. It's, off the top of the wall. It's over. That one's out of here, folks. DJ Dillahay with a solo home run in the bottom of the fifth inning. When he crosses the plate, that'll bring the deficit back to four, Chris. That's where you were hoping it was going to be earlier. Oh, no question. Six, six to two, Rebels. Adela, hey, like I said, that young man, if you saw him on the football field, he can just turn those things out of seems out of thin air. He's just a wonderful athlete like that. Now up, number 24. William Zevick will follow that up. William Zevick. First baseman this game for the Cats. See what he can produce here. Outside. Takes, takes one high and outside from Suns. There's still no action in the Franklin County bullpen. Zebic with a pop-up and a fly-out. Excuse me, pop-up and a strikeout in this game. That one was about four feet short of the plate. Yeah, that one was uh, definitely trying to entertain the worms that might have been out there in the dirt right now. 2-0 to Zebic. We'll see if he's got the swing-away sign or the let's make him throw a strike first sign. That one's outside as well. 3-0. And Zebit's another one of those dangerous hitters. He's one of those kids that you you can just put it kind of where he wants it. Be good to have Zebic on base. That one's Ooh. inside, and he will be. Be runner at first with two outs. As James Sales strolls to the plate. Sales with a triple on his last at bat. Right fielder number six, James It'd be nice to see Sales. that right now. Get another run across. We'll take all we can get, Chris, for sure. Suns is still the man for Franklin County. Not a hint of anybody headed to the bullpen for the Rebels. Zevic with a modest lead at first. That's one thing I'll give Coach Crosley. He seems to – he will stick with the pitcher. That off-speed pitch – Catches the outside part of the plate. Sails in a hole 0 and 1. Two outs, man at first. Ton of room on the right side of the outfield as Jones shades. Gone. That ball's gone. deep as well. Left fielder headed back. Out. And that one's gone. That one caught the light pole, folks. So we are back to a two-run game. We are back to a ball game. On a beautiful home run by James Sales. The two senior leaders cross the plate and make this a 6-4 to four game in the bottom of the fifth. Well, that's what the Cats needed. Brings up designated hitter Brody Melton. And some confidence, too. And some confidence to the dugout that says, hey, 
This game is still within reach. You are right. Melton at the plate. Left the game as pitcher, staying in to DH. He says, sons, you're taking too much time. I'm going to step out on you here. Here's the pitch from Suns. Melton awaits, oh. a swing and a miss. Oh one one count on Melton. So he stands back in there. Suns gets the sign from Hill. And the pitch. Off-speed pitch. Outside. Catches the plate. Oh, it did. Puts Brody in a hole, 0-2. Oh <clears throat> Hill shorten up. On the bat, and be ready. There we go. 0-2 pitch from Suns. Milton pops that one back and out of play. He'll live to play another day. He seems to have a bit of enthusiasm that he didn't have the last at-bat. I'd like to see Melton do some damage here as well. And we all know he's capable of it. And I think Suns is very aware of that. The pitch from Suns. Oh. Nice coverage of the plate by Melton to stay alive. 0-2. Fouled back to the screen. You know, there was a good chance that that was a ball. But I'm glad that Brody didn't take the risk of it getting called a strike. and Because he can reach out and tap those. That's right. He waits the 0-2 pitch from Suns. He's going to take one high. One and two. That also lets Suns know, hey, I can get that ball over there. Outfield plays Brody to pull just a shade. Off-speed pitch, low and outside. Evens the count. Two and two. Melton battling here. Good at bat. Again, the sign from Hill to Sun. Suns is ready. Comes to the plate. Outside. Nice eye by Milton to bring the count back from an 0-2 count to a full count. Three and two. Two outs, nobody on. Three runs in in the bottom half of the fifth for the Cats. And we have, if, uh, depending on how this goes, we'll have J. Ron Morris up next. Here's the pitch. Okay. That one called a strike to end the inning. Good half inning for the Cats. They played three on two home runs. We'll go to the top of the sixth. We've got a ball game, folks. Stay with us. Rebels lead 6-4 to four on the Light Tube Sports Network. back with you from Grider Stadium on the campus of Tullahoma High School. Headed to the top of the sixth. Eric Jones will lead off the top half of the inning for the Rebels. Evan Tomlin still on the mound for the Cats. Tomlin's ready. Ooh. That one's inside. Fastball inside. Tomlin pitching from the stretch even with no runners on. Obviously, his comfort level gets a sign from Tucker. The 1-0. Swing and a foul ball back. Evens the count at 1-1. One one. Now, let, you know, Jones has a pretty good set of wheels on him. He does. They're shading him to right. That ball's outside. I should say Duncan and center shading him to right. Sails and right more straight away. Moves, moves a little bit right now. 
Gavin Hill on deck for the Rebels. Here's the pitch from Tomlin. Another foul ball. A late swing from Jones, but he catches a piece. Two and two count. Tomlin's ready. Gets the sign from Tucker. From the stretch. Here's the pitch. Off-speed pitch. Inside. Oh. Catches the inside corner. And it's... Caught looking is Mr. Jones. Next up, catcher number 25, Gavin Hill. Gavin Hill be next up for the Rebels. Hill with two strikeouts. Also a walk on the day. Walked last inning. He comes up with nobody on and one out in the top of the six. The Rebels leading six to four. Here's a pitch from Tomlin, an off-speed pitch. Must have missed low. That looked good from it 35 little, feet, Chris. It was a little low. Tucker looks over the dugout to get his sign, and then he will turn around and give that sign to Tomlin. Tomlin's ready from the stretch. Here's the pitch. Oh. That one's to short. Dillahay gathers it up. The throw over to Zebik. A little low. Nice play by Zebik. Out number two of the inning. Good. Think, we see Tom a little bit happier on the mound. You know, he gets to start this one off and doesn't have to inherit a bases loaded and several run condition. That's right. So, so with two out, Franklin County will send designated hitter McKinnon Whitsett to the plate. Now, Whitsett is dangerous on the – at the plate, you know, he can he can hammer a ball real well. He'll have to do it with two outs in this frame. First pitch popped up. Like First base looks like Zebek is surveying the damage, and he's got it for out number three. Nice work by the defense in the top half of the sixth. We'll head to the bottom half. Rebels lead the Wildcats 6-4 to four on the Light Tube Sports Network. Tullahoma Utilities Authority Light Tube Fiber Internet offers true gigabit service to our customers. We pride ourselves on speed, but the backbone of that speed is local tech support, unmatched customer service, and professional service technicians. To sign up, call 455-4515 to gain the reassurance of Light Tube reliability. We're back Morris. here with you from Grider Stadium, headed to the bottom of the six. J. Ron Morris, third baseman for the Cats, will lead us off. See if they can cut this two-run Rebel lead. The pitch, oh. aggressive from Morris. Center fielder almost dead in his tracks. Out number one for the Cats. A good hit. Just had a little too much lift on it. That will lead us to Caden Tucker. Catcher tonight. And behind the plate is now up in the box. Number two, Caden Tucker. For the Cats. Tucker with a strikeout and a pop out to left field earlier in the game. He'll take the first pitch from Suns outside for ball one. The shadow's getting long here in game one of this eight. Triple A rivalry. Oh, yes. Beautiful hit over the top of the glove of the shortstop for Tucker. One on and one out as Joe Duncan strolls to the plate for the Cats. We'll, we'll take all the base runners we can get, Chris. And I'm sure that Grimes is just beating himself up out there with that tip on his glove. Courtesy runner for the catcher, number 22, Jaden Eggleston. Now at the plate, center fielder, number nine, Now, Joe Eggleston, there's Tucker. a kid with some wheels on him. Jaden Eggleston coming in for Tucker as a courtesy runner. We'll see if Duncan can bring Eggleston on around to cut into this lead. Duncan, a no batting glove player. First pitch in this at bat from Suns is outside. Excuse me, they call that strike one. 
I think it caught just the edge of that, just the corner. Now, I know it's very close from what the vantage point I'm at, so I, I think I'll agree with him. Eggleston with a good size lead at first. Off speed pitch misses outside. Even the count at one and one for Duncan. Lineup leadoff hitter Jackson Sheffield on deck for the Cats. Chef hadn't had a real good batting event tonight. Sheffield with a walk earlier in the game. See what Mr. Duncan can do here. Here's the pitch from Suns. Good pitch. And uh, you saw Joe. Joe was beating himself up right after that came across. You saw him just like, oh, that was it. He should have just unloaded on it. He may have been looking for something at a different velocity. One, two, the count on Duncan. Runner on first. Eggleston gets his lead. Eggleston increases the lead. All-speed pitch fouled back and away by Duncan. He'll get a two-strike chance again. Eggleston's another one of those really good athletes. Uh, he played multiple, multiple sports coming up. He's quick. He's agile. That's what you need at the high school level. Eggleston with a large lead at first. That pitch is high and away. It evens the count for Duncan at two and two. Coach Morris gives the signs third quickly. Duncan's ready. He'll give in the sign to Suns. Here's the pitch. Yes. Yep. Yes. Good hit over short for Duncan. Eggleston will have to hold at second, but we've got runners at first and second with one out. Jackson Sheffield strolls to the plate. Coming up to the plate, left fielder, number 32, Jackson Sheffield. A good piece of hitting there by Joe Duncan. Going opposite way, moving the runner along, giving the Cats some more opportunities here with one out. Down by two in the bottom of the sixth. Love to see Sheffield with a solid hit here that would play at least one. Here's the pitch from Suns. That one's popped up towards the third base dugout. Third baseman giving chase. That's trouble. Oh, it hit the ground, fell foul. That's a long, loud strike. 0-1 will be the count on Jackson Sheffield. It has the down the third baseman was completely going toward the light and even worse in and out of the light to trying to get that ball. Roberts the third baseman shortstops Grimes left fielder all converging but unsuccessful. 0-1's count. Sheffield awaits the pitch. Here's the pitch from Suns. The ball's outside. That'll even the count at 1-1. One Everybody in white looking down at Coach Morris to see what the signs are. Frank County Catcher Hill looking to his dugout to see what his signs are. Hill gives the signs to Suns. Sheffield's ready from the stretch. Runners on first and second. Take their leads. The pitch. That'll be called strike. strike on the outside half of the plate. Good pitch from Suns. Gives him a one and two advantage. To Mr. Sheffield. We're going to have to have Jackson got the battle a little bit here. Jackson in the hole, one and two. One out. Waits on the pitch from Suns. Swing and fouled our way. That one bounced right off the corner of the press box. Can confirm that Chris did not bring his glove for tonight's game. I did not. Uh, every now and again, I think I might need a mitt, and this could be one of those nights. Sheffield will get another opportunity with two strikes. Cats needing two runs or more. That one's outside. Evens the count. Two and two. I'd like to see three runs come across that plate, though. I'll take two, three. Oh, one. You name it. I'd be I'd be happy with one. 
Suns gets the sign. Checks on Eggleston at second. Here's the pitch. That pitch is a call. Strike three. And that'll be two outs for the Cats. 20. Sheffield just hasn't had a good Coming night at, plate, at bat. Baseman, 10, Jacob he has made it on base, but he hasn't gotten a hit tonight. Jacob Dixon will be the be the batter here with two strikes for the Cats. Home half of the sixth. Down by two with two runners on. Here's the pitch. That one, another called strike. Puts Dixon in the hole 0 and 1. Dixon 1 for 3 on the evening. Single in his first at bat. He calls time. Steps out. And I'd like to see a, a, a single would be great right now. It would. Giving him plenty of room in right field. Seems like Jones shades towards center just about every batter. Suns shakes off his catcher. Dixon a little bit frustrated with the amount of time Mr. Suns and Mr. Hill are taking to communicate. He steps out again, back in and ready. Here's the pitch. That one's outside. That evens the count at one and one. If you're just joining us, where have you been? We're in the bottom of the sixth. Franklin County leads the Cats six to four. You know, as we're approaching 547, it's almost time what we originally were going to start tonight. That's right. All speed pitch. Nice pitch. Gets Dixon out in front. Two strikes. It seemed, it seemed like he was swinging a little bit in slow motion. Yes, yeah, so he realized that off-speed pitch was coming and tried to slow down, but he couldn't slow down enough. Puts him in the hole one and two. Runners at first and second take their lead. There's an outside pitch that evens the count at two and two on Jacob Dixon. Dixon's ready. Suns getting the sign, checking on Eggleston at second. Duncan gets his lead from first. Here's the pitch. Off the end of the bat. Good battle nice. for Dixon. Exactly. Good battle, good plate coverage for Jacob Dixon. Stays alive. If you've just joined us and you didn't hear earlier, this is a strange schedule tonight. Cats playing one at home and one at Franklin County. More on that in a minute. Here's the pitch. Yes. Line drive up the middle. That's going to find the green grass. Eggleston's going to make his way home. A bobble by the center fielder. He gets the ball in. Coach Morris holds up Joe Duncan at third. And a big hit from Jacob Dixon. That makes the score six to five in the bottom of the six. Cats still fighting hard. That brings DJ Dillahay to the plate. And DJ had a great at bat now, last time. Your Wildcats, number 21, shortstop DJ Delahaye. And I'm sure that's going to play a little bit on Suns. So Delahaye put it out the park last time he was up to bat. Franklin County with someone in the pen now. Delahaye with a big fly last inning. Kind of got this rally started for the Cats as they trailed six to one. The time is called. Got a loose ball from the bullpen. Franklin County bullpen. More on our strange schedule tonight. We've got a timeout here by Franklin County's coach headed towards the mound. As he's headed that way, we'll talk a little bit more about this schedule. The second game tonight was originally scheduled for tomorrow night to be an away game for the Cats at Franklin County due to some impending weather forecasted for tomorrow. That game moved up to the second part of this evening's game. And we've got a home and away double header. Franklin County and the Cats. Mr. Sons has seen his last batter as he goes five and two thirds inning. He leaves with the lead, but he also leaves with two runners on. As the new Franklin County pitcher takes his warm up tosses, we'll head to a break, but we'll be right back 
on the Light Tube Sports well, Network. Specifically played into our mission when we separated from our parent company and became an employee stock ownership program. Oh, we had to be disconnected from a large network and exist on our own. We needed relatively high speed connectivity, which we got at about a 200% discount uh, with Light Tube. Businesses can get beyond what most businesses uh, in the country can get from Light Tube uh, as far as uh, internet connection. Franklin County makes a pitching change in the bottom of the sixth inning. Going to their bullpen. Bringing in number 10, Gaddis Henley. Now, Henley was supposed to start off that second game tonight, so this must be ready to change up their game plan a little bit. Be interesting to see what they do now in the second game. They've still got action going on down in their bullpen. Mr. Henley will get to... And here it runners on the corners and DJ Dillahay at the plate. As we mentioned before, the change of pitchers, Dillahay with a long home run. Excuse me, a home run off the top of the fence. Yeah, it bounced. Last inning. Running at first goes. It's going to be second base unattempted for uh, Jacob Dixon. Runners now at second and third, two outs. Cats trail by one. Shortstop, DJ Dillahay will try to change that. The 1 0 count from Henley. That ball's drilled foul. But foul. Down the third baseline. And honestly, I mean, that's a batter. Dillahay's a batter that I would like to have, I have confidence in when you have a picture change and he can still do something. Right. Quick bat, good sports mind. One and one is the count. A lot like Dixon in that aspect. That ball's outside. Two and one. We'll take it. William Zebek on deck for the Cats. Zebek scored on James Sell's home run last inning. But we've got Dillahay at the plate right now. The 2-1 off-speed pitch catches the black part of the plate. And that's so, one thing I'll give this particular umpire. If it's just close to that corner, he's calling it. That evens the count at 2-2. Two and two. DJ will be looking for anything close. The pitch, right. back, shortstop. That takes his head off. Both runners will come around to score. The Cats will take the lead in the bottom of the sixth. A rocket to short by D.J. Dillahay, plates two. And the Cats take a 7-6 to six lead. And that's Next why I like having Dillahay at the bat. He can just do Williams things like that. Seven. A rocket off the bat of Dillahay brings... William Zabek to the plate. And Zabek's another one of those. You know, he, he, he's – there's a reason he's clean up. Zabek waits and waits and waits on Henley and finally steps out. And I appreciate that. It kind of forces Trenton County to speed up the motion a little bit or else he's going to ice you right before you're ready to go. Henley now ready from the stretch. All-speed pitch called strike one. A little, little inside. I think uh, Henley was saying hello. That leaves us with an 0-1 count. Two outs. Runner on first is DJ Dillahay. Cats have taken the lead in the bottom of the six. The pitch that ball is going to be grounded foul, wide of third. Dillahay will return to first. Third baseman will skip the ball across the diamond. It'd be nice to get a couple more runs just to pad that lead a little bit. Zebek stands back in there in the hole 0 and 2. The wind has been at a constant pace, if you will, this entire game. 
Runner goes. That pitch is an off-speed pitch outside. Dillahay will take second. I see the namesake for the field in the stands. That's one Jerry Mathis. He spent a day or two on this grass. Yeah, it's a few years. Cats have a runner at second. Zebek at the plate. Here's a pitch from Henley. That pitch is going to be outside. Uh, and that's, you know, Henley's now got to worry about Dillahay and Zebek. So I, I like the fact that DJ's out there messing with his mind as well. It's in, always interesting to see how much attention a pitcher pays to the runners on base. Dillahay with a nice lead at second. Uh, nice hole there by Zevic on a tight pitch that is outside and fills the count at three and two. I was a little concerned about that call, just on based on how the uh, how the referees or umpires been making those calls today. Absolutely, and the Franklin County crowd anticipated that one being a strike. And it was right there because he's been calling just in the vicinity of those corner strikes, so. Dillahay gets his lead, shortstop moves in behind him and now away. Here's the pitch. That ball outside. Zebic draws a walk. I believe he came back from an 0-2 count, if I'm not mistaken. Yes, he did. Now, right up to the plate. And you have right Sells fielder, taking six, over. James this is gonna Sells. this I actually like this positioning for uh Tallahoma. You know, Henley's got his Sells last at bat was a home run. You've got a gentleman who likes to move around like Dillahay and Zabick both on on bases. So three smart baseball players on base and and uh, in the box for the Cats. Two outs. Runners on first and second. James Sells at the plate. Here's the pitch, a swing and a foul ball towards the track. James Sells with a mammoth home run off the light pole in left field, last inning, last at bat, that scored himself and Zebic. Zebic with back-to-back -back walks in his two last plate appearances. Sells is ready. Henley now ready. From the stretch, yeah. good curveball, catches the Came Inst right in at the last moment. Count the extra inside part of the plate. Put sales in a hole 0 and 2. Sales awaits. Now the pitcher's ready. Henley comes to the plate. Uh, really? Uh, another curve ball that catches the plate. The Cats will leave two stranded, but they put another three up on the scoreboard. We head to the seventh. The Cats take their first lead of the game, leading the Rebels seven to six. You're watching the Like Tube Sports Network. You want to dance? Check out Stingray Music on TV. Now available, the new Stingray Music mobile app. Free with your TV subscription. Stingray Music. All good vibes. Head to the top half of the seventh inning. Evan Tomlin still on the mound for the Cats. Second baseman for the Rebels, Wyatt Loeb, will lead off the seventh. Low with a strikeout. Hit by pitch and a walk in his three previous at bats tonight. And, and a couple of impressive catches, too. He's had a heck of a good night. First pitch from Tomlin's inside for ball one. Tomlin falls behind on the count. <clears throat> Outfield playing in just a shade. Ball low, 
for ball number two. Tomlin with the sign from Tucker. Again from the stretch, the pitch. That one's low. Three pitches and three balls to second baseman for the Rebels. Wyatt Lowe. I would imagine Mr. Lowe will be watching this one go by. Called strike on a 3-0 pitch. Makes it 3-1. and one. He wasn't expecting that. He thought that was going to be a ball. He had uh, made his decision before the home plate umpire had made his, apparently. Three and one count. Tomlin with the delivery. Uh, that was a ball. And ball four will send low to first base. Leadoff runner on. Coach Morris making his way towards the mound. Number 15. Yeah, I think he's going to tell Evan, hey, man. Cameron Weaver. DJ's coming in. DJ long tossing behind short. Yeah. That's an old Joe Barstead trick. <laughs> Long timeout, took the ball short stop. He's long tossing with uh, backup catcher Colton Emery. Oh, yeah. And uh, the smart people here in the press box have – Figured out what's going on. I'll just say it wasn't the gentleman whose voice you hear right now. <laughs> no, no, we're joining the press box with Mr. Sells and uh, whose son may be out there on the ball field. Maybe. And uh, Principal Jason Quick. And, yes, we see Evan Tomlin heading out. Evan Tomlin. Not sure where he's going to land, but. DJ Dillahay definitely taking the mound here to try to close things out for the Cats. Now you got to see, Dilla, it looks like a DJ cut his hair for baseball season. DJ's locks are gone. He'll take a few warm-up tosses, and we will head to break, but we will be right back. Don't you go anywhere. You're listening and watching the Light Tube Sports Network. Never miss Network. your favorite shows again. For an additional $12 a month, along with your digital television service, LightTube Cloud DVR lets you record up to eight programs at the same time, receive 500 gigabytes of cloud storage, and whole home DVR. Call TUA Customer Service to add LightTube Cloud DVR to your digital television service today at 455-4515. We welcome you back to Grider Stadium, Jerry Mathis Field. DJ Dillahay takes his last warm-up toss. He and Evan Tomlin switch spots on defense. Tomlin goes to short. DJ on the mound. And Cameron Weaver is in the batter, batting box, first baseman for Franklin County. That he is. A two-strikeout victim a one and one walk tonight. Short lead, runner at first. DJ from the stretch and the pitch. Runner squares around a bunt. It's in the air. A nice play Caught. by Morris at third. And that'll be out number one in the top half of the seventh for the Cats. Chris will take that. No question. That's the one thing we've seen two bunts tonight that, you know. Backfire. One from Tullahoma, one from Friendly County. And same problem with both of them. They got too high and hung out there too long. Austin Roberts, excuse me, no. Yeah. Sorry, Austin Roberts. See what he can do here for the Rebels. With one out and one on. Visiting half of the seventh. DJ with a long look in. The Caden Tucker. Low off first. Off-speed pitch catches the plate. Catches Roberts looking. Strike one to the Rebel third baseman. 
Tucker and Dillahay meet between the mound and home plate to discuss what they'll be eating on the way to Franklin County. He's probably just giving me some advice since Tucker's seen all these batters tonight, getting a feel of who will do, who will bite at what. Dillahay checks on low at first with a short lead. Here's the pitch, right down Broadway for strike two. That puts Austin Roberts for Franklin County in a hole 0 and 2. And that's exactly where we want him. That's exactly right. Be interesting to see what happens here with a runner on with an 0 2 count from Dillahay. The pitch, all speed pitch. Roberts way out in front of it. Strikeout, out number two for the Rebels. This will bring Anthony Sino to the plate. Two outs, runner on first. And he last effort, last ditch opportunity for the Rebels. With the left fielder. And uh, the Cats don't believe that he can pull the ball off Dillahay as they shade him to right. First pitch low in the dirt, swing and a miss for strike one. The ball getting away from Tucker enough so that Lowe takes second base. And I agree with that, you know. Just focus on what's here at home plate. Let him take second, especially when you're in the seventh inning. All they've got to do is get two more strikes, and that's that. Let's go that's to Franklin right. County. Dillahay's ready. Checks on low at second, and pitch is a curveball that catches the inside part of the plate. Strike two on Sino. That one came right in about the front of the batting box. Started coming back in, so that was a tricky throw. Tucker gives the sign. Dillahay's ready, an 0-2 pitch. Coming to Sino. Nothing but gas. And out number three for your Tullahoma Wildcats as they come back from a 6-1 to one deficit to take the first of two from our visitors from Franklin County. Tremendous comeback effort by the Cats. Again, one down 6-1 to one as they headed to the bottom of the fifth. Score six in the last Franklin two home County. halves. To win game one and move to six and two on the season. And that's going to be Chris Barstad and Jason Ray with you tonight. And we will be back here in a week with softball with Jason Ray and Scott Hargrove over watching the Lady Cats. So have a good evening and we will see you next Wednesday.